over delivery is actually dangerous. Whereas the reality is today, a bad game can be fixed. No new game iterated on in secret for however many years can show up and immediately beat the existing live services. When I first heard that PlayStation's newly acquired Bungie was responsible for the delay of Naughty Dog's upcoming Last of Us multiplayer project, I was livid. Myself and many other fans of the original Factions multiplayer have been waiting for years for this promised sequel. And after a long silence about this project, Naughty Dog finally began heavily hinting that we would be getting some news that we have been so desperately craving. And just as we were about to get that news, Bungie came in at the last second, swinging a seven iron of doom and crushing our spirits. But ever since we heard this news, I've been trying to figure out why? I mean, what could have been so wrong with this faction's project that would seem to paint this game in such dire straits? And that's when some friends like Stokens and others in the comments began to point my big poopy head towards this GDC talk that Bungie gave last year. This talk was a deep dive discussion on their philosophy on what makes a good live service game. And when I saw this video, everything became crystal clear because Everything Bungie says makes a good live service game is the exact opposite of what Naughty Dog is known for. Dr. Poop Love here, and today I want to talk about Bungie's newfound influence over Naughty Dog's multiplayer project and how this collision of two industry titans is impacting the development of factions too. And stick around until the end because I have a lot of thoughts on whether this philosophy is ultimately going to be a good thing for Naughty Dog. Let's get right into it. And where we should start is by dissecting what Bungie believes makes a good live service game. And now each of these components serves as a stark contrast to what Naughty Dog has built their brand on. The first thing that Bungie thinks makes a good live service game is velocity. And what they mean by this is speed of content, speed of patches, speed of updates. In their view, a good live service game is providing these things early and often. And in some ways it makes sense because with a live service game, your audience is going to be kind of fickle. They're going to leave pretty quickly, especially if you don't have new content for them around the corner. Bungie saw this significant drop off with Destiny 2 and employing this strategy has helped them bring it back to being a pretty big game in something that has been very financially successful. But Naughty Dog is not known for being quick. They are perfectionists. They take their time. They're known for quality. Bungie even says that speed is more important than quality. So this would be a pretty big change for Naughty Dog if they were to listen to this strategy. They take their time with things. They do everything with intention. They try to make the best possible product. But Bungie views that approach as more of a box product strategy, something that works largely for single player games. A studio will polish and polish and polish a game until it's ready. But Bungie's philosophy is that speed is more important than quality, that it's better to get something out even if it's flawed early and often rather than waiting for it to be polished over and over again because that speed of delivery is what keeps the player base around. And even if there's flaws, they'll still play it. But the other aspect that goes hand in hand with this is Bungie says that in order to do this, your studio needs to be okay with public failure, especially if you're getting out a lot of updates and a lot of releases without doing as much quality checks. The audience is gonna be upset. So it's essentially inevitable in their view that really the day one launch is going to suck regardless, that there's gonna be problems at launch no matter what. And being able to respond to this public failure in a constructive way will allow studios to iterate and iterate and continually improve on that product and bring it to a point where fans are happy. Now, this again is something that Naughty Dog is not really known for. They often don't really respond to a lot of criticism out there. They don't really acknowledge it. In fact, their communication style is to mostly just be quiet unless they are retweeting fan art. Bungie, on the other hand, does 
a weekly update this week at Bungie, and they regularly acknowledge and engage with their community. So for Naughty Dog to make a successful live service game, in Bungie's view, they will need to probably humble themselves a little bit more than they're known for. Now, Bungie goes on to say that there are really two things that you need to establish before thinking about making money with a live service game, and that is earning the trust of your players and also their retention. Now, by earning trust, you need to basically show them that you're going to regularly show up for them, that you're gonna patch out issues. You need your fan base, your player base, to have faith that you're going to give them what they want, even if you don't give it to them on day one. And you also need things to keep them engaged, keep them from leaving the game because they've already accomplished everything. Destiny certainly does a lot of this with this endless grind that they have and all of these various quests. But this is also something that Naughty Dog hasn't really done. As I said, they don't really engage a lot with their community, and so sometimes they haven't really been known to give a little bit of a heads up of what they have planned. They never told their fan base that they were even done supporting things like factions or the Uncharted multiplayers. They didn't really do a whole lot to try to earn player trust. They certainly did do things like patch out some of the issues, but other things were never addressed. Certain things that the community really didn't like were just ignored, and certainly today, there's still issues that are still in the game and retention of course was also never really a focus of Naughty Dog. They did provide updates but a lot of it didn't really expand the playability too much. You know, some new modes were definitely good, and I think they did get better with Uncharted for multiplayer by adding some things that you could grind for, by adding a ranked mode, things of that nature. But it was a little bit weaker, and they definitely broke the rule of not focusing on revenue until you get these two things right. In fact, some of their money-earning tactics actually lost player trust and turned players away. Things like adding paid deals see guns and perks and in Uncharted 4 multiplayer when they completely changed the customization economy by adding all these boring reskins that just made everything an endless grind. It really turned off a lot of players. Of course, Bungie also goes into data and data analysis as something that is big. Part of that is understanding community sentiment. Some of that you can get from various influencers or YouTube personalities that are covering the games. You can get a general sense of how the community feels about the current state of things, but you also get that from other data points, especially ones that capture less of the vocal minority and more of the silent majority, and that is things like your daily active users, things of that nature. Now, I don't know exactly how much Naughty Dog actually does to capture a lot of their data on how people play their multiplayers, but they did back in the day engage a little bit with some influencers in the space. You know, Sancho West was often collaborating with Naughty Dog, but but they did still kind of ignore some community sentiments, some things that definitely turned people off, like the tactical shotgun. Now, the other thing that Bungie goes into in this talk is what they explain as a train station instead of a train. And what they mean is that rather than delivering one big product, they really think it's better to deliver smaller, more frequent products instead. And basically trying to design the game so that there are things that can be repeated and repeated over and over. When I think of Destiny, they have things like one major update every year, but then they have some seasonal events, things like Iron Banner and other events throughout the year that are smaller and more repeatable, things that can kind of easily be replicated and repeated over and over again and slightly iterated on each time. And these basically tie back to the idea of speed and providing content updates at kind of a regular clip to keep things interesting and to keep players still still engaged with the game. And certainly that's not something Naughty Dog ever really did. But Bungie also says that in part of this, in order to actually meet these speedy demands, you never want to over deliver with a live service game. That in order to meet these deadlines and in order to eliminate things like crunch, you need to make sure you can do it, make sure it's not too ambitious, make sure it's something that can sustain over long periods of time. And when I think of Naughty Dog, and how they pour intention and ambition into everything they do and how they've even gone as far as to say that Factions 2 is their most ambitious game ever definitely makes me think that 
they were not designing this game with that in mind. But here's where I get to my thoughts and opinions on all this, because just because Bungie says that this is what makes a live service game good doesn't necessarily mean that this should be viewed as the only way. There's certainly things in here that I think Naughty Dog should do. I do think that they should be comfortable with public failure because yes, there are going to be issues with whatever they put out, no matter how quality it is, no matter how ambitious it is, there's going to be issues and their ability to respond to that and engage with their community, their ability to understand the general sentiment of their community and how to properly address that. These are all very important things that I definitely think Naughty Dog needs. And I also think that they should try more so to earn the trust of their players and have something to regularly engage them before they start focusing on how to make money. This is definitely something though that with Sony involved, I doubt even if Bungie was pushing for this, I definitely think PlayStation and Sony is more concerned with how to make the money. And so I really wonder how that's all going to shake out. But when it comes to things like speed, when it comes to things like not over delivering, I definitely think that it's a bit flawed to think that this is the only way forward because this type of stuff just gets into the age old debate, a debate that's had over and over again. And that is this debate around quality versus quantity. Bungie is very, very convinced that quantity is more important than quality when it comes to a live service game. But I just don't think that that has to be the only answer. There are various success stories all around where quality has won and where quantity has won. I mean, think about YouTube, for instance. On one side, you have Moist Critical, who posts multiple times a day, constantly feeding the YouTube algorithm, and he gets millions of views. On the other hand, you have Mr. Beast, who focuses more on quality, making sure that every second of every one of his videos counts before releasing. You also have Netflix, which focuses very heavily on pumping out a lot of content, while you also have HBO, which puts out less but more quality content. These examples exist, and so so what I'm trying to say is just because Bungie has found a way to make a live service game work doesn't necessarily mean that Naughty Dog, who is known for quality, who is known for intention and passion and polish, necessarily needs to follow this route in order to find success. Now, I'm not saying that what they had designed with Factions 2 was going to be this success story. We may never know because ultimately we never got to see that version of it. But the thing is, with this, you have this very passionate Last of Us fan base that is really interested in story and lore of this world. And that was something that was going to be pumped very heavily into this Factions 2. It was going to have a story with lore, a narrative, and ambition. That's not something that we've seen so heavily focused in a lot of multiplayer games. Sure, Destiny has a story, but no one really followed it that closely. It actually was criticized for the longest time. But Naughty Dog does have this passionate, ravenous fan base who you could imagine would definitely show up for updates that provide more lore and more story within this world. Even if those updates took a little bit longer to get out, that fan base would still show up for it because it would be the promise of new information about this world that they care so much about. Now, certainly, as a multiplayer fan, as someone that does enjoy the gameplay, I definitely want more and more things to keep me engaged with this world. I, I definitely don't mind having a little bit of a grind with whatever Factions 2 ends up being, but I don't need a grind to the level that Destiny is. And in all honesty, part of the reason I stopped playing Destiny was because I couldn't keep up with the grind. And I felt like every time they did an update, they would almost be erasing all of the work I had done up until that point, grinding away. When they raised that light level cap and suddenly I could just blow past where I had been grinding and min-maxing so hard to get to within a matter of a few hours. It felt like an empty grind. And at some point there was just too much stuff to keep track of that I fell pretty quickly behind. And look, one thing about Destiny that I know is that people constantly are hating on that game, constantly saying how bad it is. Now, that being said, it has a very active player count. And this is in part what Bungie has been saying where you don't wanna over deliver and you need to be comfortable with public failure. I mean, these people that kind of hate this game are still playing this game. It's still generating revenue for Bungie. Destiny is still considered success, but do we 
we really want a Factions 2 where everyone is constantly hating on it? I mean, let's be real. Everyone constantly hates on the original Factions maybe it's inevitable. But is that what Naughty Dog really should be aiming for? I for one wouldn't mind a more thoughtfully crafted factions experience. One that is attempting to provide a high quality experience with the best graphics, with super engaging gameplay, and an amazing story. And as long as Naughty Dog is transparent, and as long as they set the right expectations with their fans about when to expect major updates, they can put that extra effort in and give us an ambitious product when it's ready. And then this game could end up being one that does attempt to do all the things that most multiplayers don't. I think that would be a pretty big differentiating factor that actually could define success for this game. When you think about some of these other live service games that Sony is pushing, they look pretty generic. They don't look like they're offering anything that unique or ambitious. And yeah, sure, maybe this is past Bungie's sniff test because maybe they have a plan to continually and constantly deliver updates. But is it really going to take the world by storm? So I don't know. I don't know what it takes to make a successful live service game. I just believe that there are probably multiple different paths and that what Bungie has defined here certainly can work, but I don't necessarily believe that Naughty Dog should follow every one of these to a T, especially when so much of it seems to be in stark contrast to their brand, to what they're known for. I don't necessarily think it's a good thing for them to try to bend over backwards into this other route. I certainly am curious to see how much Factions 2 eventually, when it finally does come out, how much it does seem to be influenced by this very GDC talk right here. I suspect that the final product is going to look a lot like what was demonstrated in this talk. And so my only hope is that that still ends up giving us a game that is worthy of our time and attention. Because despite this negative assessment from Bungie, I do still believe Factions 2 is coming out. And if you want to see why I believe Factions 2 is not canceled, you should check this video out. But otherwise, so long, Pooper Troopers.